point is, in the past 10 years, it just seems as the cancer diagnosis for me has tripled. And not only are people not in early stages, they are already in the fourth stage and has in the cancer has metastasized. And these people's ages can be as young as in their 30s, 40s, 50s, it's just all over the place. And for me, being in this profession and having read your book, <laughs> I still feel helpless because these people come and they going on radiation and chemo, and some of them are coming out okay, but many of them are not. You cannot practice the religion of your God at the level I teach it and keep your job. They'll fire you because there's no place for understanding at this level in your industry. So you're stuck being a servant to an industry that has made no provision to help people at the level that I represent. And because the industry is a godless religion in itself, it's the religion of men and science. Now, <laughs> cancer is something that God has used me uh, over the years to help people get free, including terminal, stage four, in many cases. Um, there's many reasons for, for cancer. Maybe tomorrow's afternoon when I talk about profiles of disease, I won't teach it now. Stay tuned, you're gonna be here tomorrow afternoon. I'm gonna do something called profiles of disease, and I'll go into the immune system and discuss allergies, and also discuss the process of why a person becomes susceptible to cancer and how it comes and how it gets a hold. And what part does the immune system play in that? Uh, also, there's the big issue of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, according to scripture, is a form of murder. Read your Bible. And under the law of Moses, the penalty for murder was death. We've got some talking to do, don't we? There's a lot of things of, of activity people have in bitterness against others. People have bitterness against God. And many people have bitterness against themselves. And so there's a lot of... of I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you what I know. The average person develops a rogue cancer cell at least a hundred times in their lifetime. One, one of those rogue cancer cells shows up. But according to the Journal of American Medicine, if the person has a healthy immune system, the chances of that rogue cancer cell docking and forming a tumor, listen to this, is only one in one million. Those are good statistics. But if the immune system is compromised, the chances of that rogue cancer cell docking and forming a tumor is quite problematic. So, what happens? The first thing is fear. When you don't like somebody or they've made a victim out of you, you avoid them. You go to the grocery store, they go down one aisle, you go down the other one. Peek around the corner hoping they're leaving soon. <laughs> I mean, this is what happens. You go, you, go to, you go to Christmas reunion time. Everybody there don't like each other. That's only one time a year they get together. And great tragedies occur because there's no relationship. There's just friction and conflict and accusation and all kinds of garbage. The immune system's health depends on our spirituality, not our nutrition. You can, you can have a compromised immune system. You can be, go to your doctor and he say you have a compromised immune system and what they do with you in the health field is put you on a very expensive regimen of vitamins and supplements and herbs to build your immune system up. But while you're spending all that thousands of dollars of money, cortisol is destroying the very thing you're trying to help, which is coming out of fear. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. And the biggest problem we have is relation. One of the things I started my conversation today with was the foundation of Jesus' teachings. Love who? The Lord your God. You love who else? Your neighbor as yourself. So the, the baseline is relationship. And, and your ability to walk in love has nothing to do with anybody else's inability to do so. If you make your safety of mind and peace of mind based on the sanity of another, you're an idolatry. And they're your source. You're saying, I'll be sane when they are. 
They'll never get, why do they never get sane? You're going to be insane with them for the rest of your life. So there's all this thinking that has to happen. First of all, if, if, you have, if you have this type of fear from broken relationships, not only is your immune system, you know, affected, there's something else affected, which is cortisol 2. Cortisol 2, cortisol 1. Have you had anybody in the nursing field, you know, you studied some of this stuff in your time? Cortisol, uh, interleukin 2, is the body chemical, can I dumb it down to this, that allows your white corpuscles to recognize the antigen marker on a cancer cell and eat it. God designed that if there's a cancer cell formed in your body, God designed your immune system, if the person is spiritually correct, to identify that cancer cell and eat it until it's destroyed that you may live. That's how God designed it. But if you want your, your body that God created to serve you to not serve you, then don't serve mankind around you. You are called to be servants of God forever. For good. For good. All the time. Say, yeah, but, 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 Stuck away there in the 13th chapter of Zechariah. It's a prophetic scripture. It hasn't happened yet. It points to the future when the Lord Jesus is in Jerusalem receiving the nations. And they're coming up from all over the earth to declare he is King of kings and Lord of lords. And when they come up to see him, they can still see the wounds in his hands. And anybody that comes to me and said they've seen Jesus visit them, I said, did you see his wounds? Oh no, he has a glorified body. <laughs> That's not Jesus then, because the prophet Zechariah says, you can see the wounds. And that's future tense. You can see the wounds. So they're going to be there in the future. They're there now. Just saying. And these people come up and they meet Jesus and they say, Sir, their question and his answer is recorded by the prophet. They say, Sir, where did you get these wounds that we see? His answer has already been recorded by the prophet that he will say to them, These are the wounds I received in the house of my friends. That was enough for Henry. How many of you have friends that have wounded you? They've not crucified you yet, have they? Well, maybe verbally they have. Have you died yet? So you're still here. That set the standard for Henry to forgive forever. I don't have to think about forgiving anymore. I just forgive. Man, I got a little emotional on that one.